A very good morning and thank you very much for joining us on GBS Morning Extra. My name is Timothy Omondi and you're welcome on board. If you'd like to keep the conversation going, contact us on the number on your screen. That's 21144. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And you can also get to watch this very episode on YouTube. To start us off this morning on his tour to the Caribbean nation of Jamaica, President Uhuru Kenyatta was received by his host and Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness. It's key in their discussion was the introduction of air transport connecting Kenya and Jamaica. In Jamaica, President Uhuru Kenyatta had a good time for discussions with Jamaican President Andrew Holness. Both explored more existing opportunities for cooperation in air transport, which will help in growth of economy for the people of both countries. I believe that today we have taken our bilateral relations to another level. Our global powerhouses, our Kenyan athletes excel in the long and middle distance races, while Jamaican athletes excel in the short distance races. There is definitely room for us to partner here. Who said that one way of deepening partnership between Kenya and Jamaica was to increase more trade ties between the two countries. Uhuru also encouraged Jamaican investors to come to Kenya since it serves as a hub for logistics and ICT innovations. Within the African Caribbean Pacific, Kenya is a strong supporter of South-to-South -South cooperation arrangements. Prime Minister Holness said that Kenya and Jamaica have had strong ties from the days of Marcus Gavi. On this trip, President Kenyatta was escorted by Cabinet Secretary Monica Juma, Najib Balala, and Amina Mohammed. Today, President Uhuru will be the chief guest at the 57th Jamaican Independence Day. Kenya will host the next African Caribbean Pacific Summit at the end of the year, where Prime Minister Holness is expected to visit Kenya. Stanley Maina, GBS TV. Well, moving on now, back home to local politics. The petition challenging Kirinyaga Governor Anne Waiguru was on Tuesday dismissed. Na Kenya party leader Martha Karua decried the ruling by the supreme by the highest court in the land. Waiguru urged her to accept the result and wait for the next election. Na Kenya party leader Martha Karua has faulted the Kenya judicial system after her petition challenging the election of Kirinyaga Governor Ann Waiguru was on Tuesday dismissed. Supreme Court Justice Isaac Lenola, while throwing out the case, further directed that each party bears costs of the proceedings. However, talking to Twitter soon afterwards, Ms. Karua said he did not get justice at the court. She also thanked those who stood with her in her judicial marathon, as well as her lawyers saying their zeal and professionalism remain unmatched. Governor Waiguru addressing the press after the ruling as the NAC Kenya party leader to accept the results and move on. The Kirinyaga County Chief further urged Ms. Karuo to wait for 2022 to get back in the ring again if she is still unsatisfied with the verdict. Reporting for GBS Morning Extra, Sharon Maloba. Now, the ruling by Supreme Court has dealt the NAC Kenya leader Martha Karua a big blow in her quest to approve Kirinyaga Governor Anne Waiguru. Karua, hope, Karua hoped uh, that hopes were thwarted when the Supreme Court, that's the highest court in the land, dismissed her appeal. She has, however, hoped to, and she had, however, hoped to unseat Ms. Waiguru at the Apex Court after her case was dismissed by both the High Court and the Court of Appeal. Uh, Anne Waiguru uh, talked to the press immediately after the ruling and urged her opponent to wait for the next election and probably join her in building the county. 
think we're amongst the uh, last cases. I think the last case to be determined. And um, like in all other cases, uh, we have won. And um, we said from the very beginning, we won this election fairly and squarely. Um, the people of Kirinyaga put their trust in us. Uh, that has not changed. And um, I think when they have looked at all the circumstances, because um, we've gone through this process twice um, in the Supreme Court and all, when they have seen um, there was no merit in the, in the petition and we have been granted our win and we're very grateful. Yeah, very happy. I think you can see it from our faces. Yeah, tired but happy. Um, we have a good team of lawyers who we trusted and um, we spent very little time in terms of preparation on our side, apart from the usual briefings and the whatever else that we needed. But it has been a distraction nonetheless. It has not affected our performance, but it has been a, an unnecessary distraction. Work would have been easier and smoother if it wasn't there. Until some news making headlines in the counties, the Kachaliba Member of Parliament, Mark Lemunokol, has raised concern over the recruitment of censors officers saying it was mad with bias, corruption, nepotism, and favoritism. The legislator said non locals were brought claiming the local youth have been sidelined in the recruitment. The legislator called on the national government to address illegal irregularities in uh, alleged irregularities in recruitment of enumerators and other support officials for the August population census before conducting the exercise. He vowed not to let outsiders run the exercise, yet they have enough jobless youth who can do it. Census, Kwanza Tausema recruitment equa fair, Sababu via corruption Kamakawaida, corruption by Ilianza too. Kunde kipindi ili ilianzishwa na kumekuwa na tetezi ama lawama kwa wananchi kwamba non locals non locals were brought in sababu ya wong we bribes na kama viongozi wa kachaliba mimi nikiwa na ma MCS wa kachaliba e, tumekata hiyo swala na now, moving on to other stories. Three suspects are now under police custody. The three suspects who are members of a machete wielding gang uh, which attacked people in Kisauni and Nyali constituencies in Mombasa have been arrested. The three suspects were identified as Jackson Okelo, who is 26 year old, Paul Ayub, 18 and 17-year-old Ibrahim Mohammed Ahmed. Police arrested the three during an operation after the Monday night attack where three, where 13 people were injured. Let's listen into this story. Bit later, but then moving on to education matters. It's a story we actually covered yesterday, reactions by the uh, Kenya National Union of Teachers, uh, Mr. Sosion. Now, the Kenya National Union of Teachers uh, West Pokot branch has castigated the Teacher Service Commission uh, for reducing teachers' salaries and denying them money for collective bargaining agreement, which was signed and deposited as a legal document. This comes after TAC backtracked on the 2016 CBA discriminating against teachers who are members of the union. The commission stopped the pay of the commission stopped the pay of about 103 624 thousand teachers uh, who are members of the Kenya National Union of Teachers. The union now says that the move by TAC to increase teachers' salary and sideline others in that will affect education standards in the country. Just look at that particular scenario when, people school, uh, when, when the schools open next year or next term. In our classrooms, 
want to say the teacher service commission you are doing more harm than good to the teaching profession by denying union dues to all branches of Kenya National Union of Teachers in Kenya is a clear testimony that your ulterior motives is not good with the well-being of the education sector in this country. That's a clear indication that the Teacher Service Commission want to kill the union, which is constitutionally and uh, legally uh, in place. What are you after anyway? You see, we are all human beings. Whether big or small, we belong to God. We are property of God. Let us avoid and desist from doing to each other the greatest injustices in, on this particular earth. We need sanity as teachers of Kenya. We need equal opportunities as teachers of Kenya. And let us obey what court has pronounced. By the way, the Teacher Service Commission took us to court. Took not to court. It is not otherwise. We never took anybody to court. It is the Teacher Service Commission who took NAT to court. And when NAT came to the full judicial process, the pronouncement of court, of labor relations court, must not be inter misinterpreted to mean the otherwise. Well, moving on to other stories now. The SGR may have come as a blessing to many people, but to people of coast and particularly uh, business people in the transport sector are not happy with the decision by government. Now, Mvita MP Abdul Samwad Nasir is threatening to move to court to petition the parliament to stop a new directive by the national government seeking all imported cargo from Mombasa to Nairobi to be transported through the standard gauge railway. Nasir uh, questioned the directive which its implementation would create a crisis to the coastal region economy. He promised to uh, summon the transport CES, James Masharia in parliament, so that he gives an explanation on the same. Let's listen in. Uh, 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 legal redress not through the courts, but through what I'm constitutionally mandated to do, and that is represent you in Parliament. So we are going to be able to, uh, Parliament goes, o goes on recess in a week's time. So yes, we are going to be asking questions to the CS in charge of transport and the CS in charge of finance, whether this is a directive and what kind of directive uh, uh, it, it was, or whether it was just the whims and desires of these two. Well, to a story that we had introduced to you earlier, three suspected members of a machete-wielding gang which attacked people in Kisauni and Nyali constituencies in Mombasa have been arrested. The three suspects were identified as Jackson Okelo, who is 26-year-old, Paula Yub, 18, and 17-year-old Ibrahim Mohamed Hafnub. Police arrested the three during an operation after the Monday night attack where... 13 people were injured. How at what waliweza kupatikana na simu mbili ambayo tunachuka. Tunaonekana ni za wizi na ilikuwa pia na power bank moja. Katika harakati ya mobsters wetu kuthibitisha kama hizo simu ni zawe. Hao washukiwa watatu hawakuweza kufungua hiyo simu ambayo ilikuwa thibitisho ya kwanza kwamba simu hizo zilikuwa ni za wenyewe. Na ninaomba watu wetu, ushirikiano wetu ambaye tumejenga kwa muda, ambaye imetuletia sisi usalama, ambaye imekuweko kwa muda ya zaidi ya misinane. Kikia sasa, ni nzuri na turudie tuwakikishe kwa mba tutengani. Well, pretty sad there. Uh, we hope that the government will put in more measures to ensure that nothing that like that happens. We remember that the coastal region has seen uh, such groups uh, appearing and disappearing, disrupting business and also the peace and tranquility in the coastal region. We hope quick recovery also for those injured during the attacks. And now, before we take a short break, I'd just like to give you a brief 
a heads up on what we are li or what's lined up for you today. Today we have a special guest who will be joining us after this break, uh, Samuel Tawish. Samuel Tawish is a political commentator and a political analyst at the same time. Uh, Samuel Tawish will be helping us to discuss the Punguza Mzigo Initiative. And also we want to look at the war on graft and how the cases in court at this particular time would probably influence the outcome of the 2022 elections. We now take a short break. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back, viewer. You are watching GBS Morning Extra. It is the seventh day of the month of August 2019, and we're fresh in studio. And earlier, as I mentioned, we have in our studio today to help us discuss matters politics today, a very special guest for the first time on GBS Morning Extra, Samuel Tawish. Karibu sana, Tawish. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for honoring our invitation. My pleasure. How have you been? Well, I've had a relatively nice morning, uh -huh. although it's um, a bit cold outside, uh -huh. but we are used uh, with this weather in Nairobi, at least at uh, this particular time in our year. Karibu sana. Asante. Now, Samuel Tawish will be helping us to discuss matters of politics, but first, before we get into that, the betting companies last week told the Senate Justice Legal and Human Rights Committee at Parliament Buildings that the Kenyan Revenue Authority have disobeyed a court order barring the taxman from interfering with the active with the day-to-day -day running activities of the companies let's listen in to this report by emmanuel Oma. the kenya revenue authority has found itself on the receiving end for initiating the freezing of bank accounts belonging to some of the betting firms despite a court order allowing them to continue operating the firms, including Sportfessa and Bettine, told Parliament last week that the Kenya Revenue Authority went against a court order in pushing for the withdrawal of their licenses and freezing of their bank accounts. The High Court had issued an order barring the Betting Control and Licensing Board and other agents from stopping the betting firms from operating after June 30, 2019. Bettine Kenya told the Senate Committee on Justice, Legal and Human Rights that despite a high court order against the Kenya Revenue Authority, various agency notices have been issued by the KRA against the companies freezing their bank accounts. The betting regulator on July 10, 2019, ordered all the telecommunication firms to stop processing payments for sports betting companies grounding their operations. BCLB said that 27 betting firms had yet to meet undisclosed licensing requirements. The firms argued that withholding a license is not a legally recognized measure of resolving a tax issue. Sportpesa told the Senate that it was illegal for the Kenya Revenue Authority to stop their business operation pending determination of the amount of tax payable. It is a measure not recognized in the Tax Procedure Act, the guiding statute for tax administration. The dispute between the Kenya Revenue Authority and the betting firms centers on the amount and responsibility of the gambling firms in collecting 20% of winnings on behalf of the taxman. The Kenya Revenue Authority in a Friday statement said that it was in talks with the betting firms. Emmanuel Ouma, GBS TV. Well, quite an interesting topic there. You, one would be left only to wonder. Some companies are being stopped from operating. Some companies are still operating whereas the actual purpose of stopping these companies, some of the reasons that the government is giving for stopping these companies from operating is about curbing the rising menace of betting, because 
recently a report actually showed that uh, a bigger percentage of young people who are committing suicide today have a history of betting and stuff like this. But we wait to see how that turns out. It's a matter before the court and we believe that there will be a clear guideline on how to approach the matter now to our main story of the day. The Third Way Alliance party leader, Dr. Ekuru Okot, has insisted that the petition to block county assemblies uh, from debating on the Punguza Mzigo bill is politically sponsored and would not see the light of day. He noted that those people opposing the bill are the enemies of the people because they do not want all Kenyans to be in power in development through the increase of funds to the world levels. Let's listen in to a bite by a crew of court uh, earlier uh, yesterday, which actually sets the basis for our discussion today with Samuel Tawish in studio. The bill. The current injunction is a temporary injunction, but which is barring the, the, the uh, stopping rather the county assembly from debating and approving. Uh, my personal view is that uh, the judge made a, made a mistake. Uh, it, it was not uh, the right decision in my view. You cannot stop or alter a constitutional timeline by way of a court order. Because where will this county assembly of Baringo today recover the 14 days that this judge has denied them. The Constitution says once IBC places the bill, then the three months, the timeline of three months begin to count, run from then when the bill is tabled. So the judge, my, in my view, uh, made a mistake. Uh, and, and, and you see, at the risk of sounding rather political, I feel the, the, the ruling was very unfair. Third Way Alliance Kenya has sued the Building Bridges Initiative. We filed a petition on the 13th of December last year Seven months later, as we speak today here, we have been denied any in, uh, temporary injunction. We have been denied any hearing of any of our application or even any of, our, of, of the, the petition itself. Yet this judge accommodates these people, the petitioners. They file this suit. They serve us at 4.45 p.m. on Friday. On Friday. And then he says, you only have one day to respond. Is it even possible? Look at even the presidential petition. The presidential petition in this country have a time frame of 14 days. You are given three days to respond. This judge, in his lack of wisdom, and you can quote me for saying that, serves, I says, serve this petition. 4.45 p.m. we receive it, and he says you have one day to respond. So which was this one day? Courts don't work on Saturday. Nobody works on weekends. So on Monday, we go there, and he says it's a mention to find out whether there are compliance. Speaker here has confirmed to me he has not received the petition. I'm going to speaker. Speaker has not received the petition. So if the speaker of Baringo, Elgeo Marakwet, we've been to Muranga, we've been to Embu, we've been to Nyandarwa, we've been to Garissa, Nairobi, all of them have not received the petition. They have not put in their responses. So on what basis then do you give such an order, which is very unconstitutional? So this is a politically sponsored petition, and they are now using the judiciary to actually play politics with the constitutional timelines. That's the unfortunate thing. But we are back in court on the 13th, and I'm sure... Tawish, quite strong sentiments there by Ekuru Okot, the party leader of the Third Way Alliance. Let me just put this very straight to you. Your take on the Punguza Mzigo initiative. Very well. Uh, thank you so much, uh, <laughs> Timothy, and of course the viewer. Um, I believe any Kenyan, including yourself, yes. really has a constitutional right if you feel that... Um, there's something that has to be changed or even amended in our constitution, and you want that to be, uh, of course, done through a popular initiative, which is a referendum. Mm -hmm. You can go and collect a million signatures, yes. uh, present the same for debate and approval, um, at least by 24 uh, counties. Mm -hmm. And then um, the same has to be approved by the bicameral houses, that is National Assembly and the Senate. Mm -hmm. And that is what uh, the law envisages, and there's nothing we can do about it. As for Ekuru Court, um, I don't want to give a blanket condemnation and say the Punguza Mzigo bill uh, does not have anything good for Kenyans. Mm -hmm. We all appreciate the fact that, uh, for example, uh, the question of the wage bill. Um, I mean, the already overburdened taxpayer is actually uh, feeling the pain uh, of continuing to actually shoulder all these um, actually uh, wages for all our public servants mm -hmm. uh, today because now it has become so big yes. uh, and some people argue it's not really necessary. Uh, the question, for example, why would you have a representation of, of um, say, 
even 17 lawmakers in Nairobi as a county, mm -hmm. when you still have MCS who have been elected and you still have MCS who have been nominated. Yes. In the same county, you have uh, that 17 elected members of parliament mm -hmm. with a senator. We have a governor and a deputy governor, and still we have the national representation. So from, I mean, from uh, our point of view is that uh, maybe there's a way we need to think as a country that is, was it really necessary in the first place? Mm -hmm. This was a mistake we made as a country mm -hmm. when we decided to go uh, from the 210 initial constituencies to 290. Yes. And now the additional uh, women representative, mm -hmm. uh, those are the pains that come with the current constitution that we have. And that is the reasoning behind mm -hmm. uh, people coming out with initiatives to see how we are going to cushion Kenyans, mm -hmm. how we're going to move forward as a country. Because again, we are running these all affairs which really need money. Mm -hmm. But again, our economy is not really um, able to sustain all this. So I, I think it is a, a good initiative, mm -hmm. only that uh, you cannot just look onto the question of reducing the number of constituencies uh, as the only alternative to really uh, cushion uh, the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. You know, it cannot be realistically possible. Because again, you have to look at it broadly. What are other avenues? What are other things that we can do as a country to ensure mm -hmm. uh, that probably we reduce this wage bill we see into it that there's proper representation at the same time because you can think of reducing the wage bill, but again, but you're compromising representation. Our representation. Okay. So it is a good initiative. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, as Kenyans, we need really to look onto it and see what are the good things that we can adopt in this um, uh, Punguza Mzigo initiative. Mm -hmm. I understand there's a BBI, yes. uh, that w which was actually uh, formed by President Kenyatta and yeah. Raila Odinga. Product of the handshake. Uh, uh, product of the handshake. Mm -hmm. uh, these two initiatives as they are now, because again, uh, the information that is coming out, much as they have not even made open, um, the kind of, they're documenting now the entire report they will be handing over to the, uh, to the two leaders. Mm -hmm. We anticipate highly that we are going to have a referendum. Why don't we sit down as Kenyan soberly and say, uh, we have a BBA recommendations here. We have the Punguza Mzigo initiative mm -hmm. here. How can we come together and try to reconcile to these two aspects? What is it that maybe a Kuru Court has mm -hmm. that maybe the BBA has not captured mm -hmm. and vice versa? Mm -hmm. You remember in 20, when we are having the, the same constitution today, yes. we had the uh, section of leaders in this country really who opposed and some Kenyans actually, a majority yeah, the, are the given no, number. The no camp. The, the no yes camp camps. and the yes camp, which mm -hmm. was led, of course, the no camp was led by now Deputy President William Ruto. Yes. These people opposed to this constitution uh, by virtue of having some elements they felt they needed to have been changed before we went to the plebiscite. Yes. But again, Kenyans, as we are known uh, to them, and uh, Raila Odinga having, uh, and others having convinced Kenyans that it is time to vote for this uh, bill yes. or uh, this referendum, nobody really listened. That's why you see some people come out and say, because Raila Odinga has, uh, has read this constitution, we have no choice but to vote for it because he does for on our behalf. Uh, and that, I think, it is taking the same... Uh, trajectory today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Raila Odinga himself is dismissing a Kuru Court's yes. initiative and yes. saying it is like nothing. Kenyans have to wait until the BBI report comes out. What is the rationale? That is what Kenyans are asking. The, it the, is all about the referendum. Samuel Tawish, the, the, <laughs> the, uh, the ODM party has been very key and instrumental in yeah. terms of criticizing uh, Kuru Court's uh, initiative. But then clearly when we see, even uh, as we listen when they are speaking publicly, we've had uh, Honorable uh, Orengo speak. We had uh, on the, the governor of Kisumu, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Professor Nyongo, uh, during the funeral mm -hmm. of his mother, uh, speaking about a change of political system in the country, where he was saying it's only a parliamentary system that can save this country. All these talks geared or directed towards a change of constitution, yeah. a change, probably like you said, a, a likely referendum. Yeah. The ODM camp or the other camp on the other side, uh, let me say the ODM camp, has also been calling for the reduction of you know, this representation in terms mm -hmm. of parliament and you know, county assemblies and so on and so forth. Are we saying the same thing in different languages? Is the Kuru Court speaking the same thing with a different language? Are the ODM speaking the same thing in a different language? And how does this you know, debate of the Punguza Mzigo initiative affect the 2022 politics generally? Mm -hmm. You know what, Timothy? Uh, I mean, our leaders today really are more interested in what, um, I mean, the entire referendum push really captures for them. It's not more of the ordinary people. Sure. Uh, that is why today you see Ekuro Okot and other leaders can disagree mm -hmm. uh, simply because 
those uh, on the other side really feel a Kura of Courts um, initiative doesn't really capture what maybe they want okay. or it does not really capture their interests. So they want their interests uh, Their interests actually included uh -huh. because now if you're talking about reducing uh -huh. uh, the number of constituencies yes. from the current 290 mm -hmm. to 149, yes. what is going to be the rationale for that? Yeah. Which constituency are you going to remove and which one are you going yeah, to uh, yeah. retain? So it's those are some of the challenges. on the matter of demarcation and you uh, know, we have to go back to We have to go back to the demarcation process, which is also uh, quite costly, um, uh, costly and um, a, a big um, responsibility yeah. on the side of the taxpayer yeah. and also in terms of I having understand. another commission to, all, to carry out all this. But again, that said and done, um, a Kuro Court initiative is not that bad. It's only that uh, you're seeing most of the popular politicians, mm -hmm. the high-profile po uh, politicians, including former Prime Minister Lodinga and others, have come out. By the way, just a point of correction, yes. it's not only ODM who is coming out against this. Mm -hmm. We have also seen Wiper make an official statement about the, uh, the Punguza Mzigo. They're saying they do not support it. Yes. They are only but waiting for the BBI. We've seen even Musali Amdavadi and others come, come out. out. Uh, even the leader of majority oh in the National Assembly, Aden Duale, has Adendwale. come out and said, I mean, the, uh, the Punguza Mzigo bill does not capture... Um, I mean the interest of most Kenyans. And according to them, they do not support it. So basically what I'm trying to say in essence is these politicians are opposed to this initiative merely because their interests are not really covered in this So push. it means that they know, some of them have an idea of what the BBI document is going to give us. R R remember the membership. Mm -hmm. Say, talking about, hey, if we don't have a prime minister as head of government, mm -hmm. then we won't have justice for all Kenyans yeah. and representation. Mm -hmm. I mean, such talks coming from someone like Dwale, mm -hmm. who is very key mm -hmm. in, in the political scene in Kenya, and then we go back and then we hear someone like Orengo speak the same words. Mm -hmm. We have Nyongo speak the same words. Mm -hmm. What is this telling us? Well, uh, Aden Dwale is no ordinary politician. Mm -hmm. Aden Dwale is a member of parliament. Yes. Uh, Aden Duale is a, is a leader of majority for <laughs> the ruling uh, Jubilee Party in the National yes. Assembly. Mm -hmm. He's actually almost the fourth in the hierarchy of leadership in as far as government is concerned today mm -hmm. in our country. Mm -hmm. And so when he speaks, anyone will be forgiven to uh, conclude that he holds brief for either, I mean for President Kenyatta. Yes. Uh, that is basically what it is, mm -hmm. uh, unless someone wants to convince us otherwise. otherwise as yeah. for James Orengo, we know is um, actually a staunch ally of um, ODM party leader Raila Odinga, and when he speaks, yeah, problems. when he speaks, everyone feels like really speaking for Raila Odinga. Sure. Although at some point or sometimes you'll hear them try to dismiss oh. uh, and want to make it as though it's a personal opinion, but in most cases, anyone will view Orengo's views as maybe that of Raila Odinga's. Mm -hmm. It's very rare. You can hardly hear Orengo actually contradict Raila Odinga on anything. Sure. So when they speak, it's all, almost likely that they are speaking for these individuals. Mm -hmm. But again, the people who constitute the, uh, the uh, is it called the Building Bridges Initiative yes, yes. Uh, team yeah. are politicians themselves, you understand, mostly uh, the politicians. Um, and they have uh, links and connections with all these politicians. Mm -hmm. So they sit and discuss every other time. They will tell, they will leak this information. That's why you saw last time some of the newspapers attempted uh, to give actually a sneak preview of what we what should be expecting as Kenyans and as far as the BBI report is concerned. Mm -hmm. In fact, some people even said, some newspapers quoted that the report has already been handed over mm -hmm. to the two leaders, which is not the case. Mm -hmm. So it tells you that uh, what they're speaking is not out of the blues. Yes. It's something that they have an idea of. It's something that they have a clue of what exactly is contained. Mm -hmm. But largely you'll notice, in all these uh, two initiatives, the biggest thing is either to reduce or to ensure that we amend the leadership. It's not more really of uh, cushioning the tax pay in as far as the cost of living is concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, when Aden Dwale speaks of um, having, uh, for example, a post of prime minister being created yeah, and having two deputy prime government. ministers, that is what is, it means in essence. Yeah. We are going to go back to where instead of having technocrats in cabinet, we are going to have politicians, politicians. who are going to serve Our in cabinet. I think that is where they are, we are looking onto. And mm -hmm. we are also going to have probably, if what um, is being said is anything to go by, that we are going to have regional uh, leaders, uh, I mean 14 for that matter, to actually replace the current county gov governors that uh -huh. we have. Uh -huh. And so the, the governors who are serving their um, second term in office and they feel like they may not n have another chance or they may not have another room to actually practice politics or to be in leadership, they are yes. going to take advantage of these initiatives and actually support. If, they, if this initiative really captures that, 
that you are going to have, for example, Mombasa as a region. Yes. So for somebody like uh, Amazon Jeff Akingi, mm -hmm. or as, uh, Hali, uh, Ali Hassan Joho, mm -hmm. or you go to uh, Western, you have Oparanya, mm -hmm. or you go to, say, the Rift Valley, you have the likes of Nanok, yes. or even uh, Tunai, mm -hmm. they will always feel like we should have this uh, plebiscite actually passed, so that so at least some of us can get an opportunity to serve to as regional back. kingpins <laughs> in these places. Uh, there's, there's, uh, I mean, <coughs> alluding to that, mm -hmm. there's one very uh, key uh, prominent politician who was quoted recently, uh, alluding to the fact that when an MP is a minister, then there is accountability because this person comes to the house regularly and can be scrutinized and can also be updating the, the parliament and the nation more often. That is their justification for going back to the parliamentary system where we have MPs sitting in as ministers as well. That's politicians sitting mm -hmm. in as ministers. Mm -hmm. And they dismiss the notion that, you know, politicians cannot run government, that mm -hmm. it's not only technocrats that can run government, but which I some, to some degree agree because mm -hmm. when the Jubilee administration was coming into power, there was the promise of not including politicians. But look at the cabinet right now. Mm -hmm. Najib Balala, we have Mwangi Kinjuri, we have all these people back inside the cabinet. Mm -hmm. What is happening? Well, one thing we have to clarify to the viewer is not that we having uh, the likes of Balala, the likes of Ngilu, the others who are actually in politics before, Ababu Namwamba, Rachel Shebesh, and now in cabinet, are not actually in active politics. Mm -hmm. But now the BBI proposal, I suppose, is that we should have politicians who are actively in actively office, those who are members of parliament or even whether it is the National Assembly or the Senate, mm -hmm. uh, serving at that particular moment, actually also serving or doubling up as ministers in cabinet. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I look uh, at the argument being advanced by the uh, proponents of the BBI initiative that uh, if having the elected in individuals, those who are MPs, uh, serving as ministers at the same time, that uh, it increases level of accountability. I do not think really that argument holds any water. Why am I saying so? Uh, because again, today, much as we have technocrats as ministers, whenever necessary, whenever wanted, you'll always see MPs actually summon these ministers to come and shed more light on one, two, three things regarding yeah. their ministries or regarding their portfolios. Mm -hmm. We've seen them actually summoning these, uh, I mean, CSS every now and then. Mm -hmm. So it cannot be that when you have these lawmakers actually on the floor of the house, the only moment that they, we can actually see the accountability that they are purporting to actually mm -hmm. advance. So those reasons are not really, uh, the, the excuse is not, not really viable. It's mm -hmm. not uh, enough, uh, convincing enough mm -hmm. uh, for the ordinary Kenyan to understand why you will tell us it's better or you having we are going to have more accountability mm. if you have this if you are to have these individuals in uh, in parliament as compared to have technocrats who are not politicians at all because when you come to ministers it has nothing really to do with politics mm. they're saying that they are detached with people they do not understand them mm. they feel like politicians understand the needs of the people more than uh, the technocrats. technocrats but again these technocrats are kenyan citizens they're they come from yeah they come from these places they understand the challenges that people actually go through but but mm -hmm. Stavish, that is actually my argument uh -huh. because see this even those politicians who are now in cabinet mm -hmm. seemingly like you're saying not in active politics yeah. Yes, they're not in active politics, but look at how some of them ended up in cabinet. Mm -hmm. It is because they vied mm. and they did not make it. Mm -hmm. So they were awarded positions in government. And to be very precise, mm -hmm. some positions were created by the president, which were never even existent. Mm -hmm. We have like the positions that, uh, what do we call them? The A ACS, or what do we call these positions? Oh, the ACS, yeah, the, the, the Babu Namambas and Babu Namambas Namambas like. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a lot of you know hue and cry in the country of what really is the you know is the pos is the purpose is mm -hmm. like duplication of of duties because we have the CS we have the PS and then we have you know the heads of departments. <coughs> still, my argument, we still have politicians and this, as much as we may want to say that they are not active in politics. To be very honest, when you listen to them in some rallies where they go, yeah. They're just politicians. I mean, they're just playing politics and they're party members. Yeah. How can we term them as not active? Or is it active in terms of, you know, sitting in parliament and sitting in, uh, do we term active as just sitting in parliament? Uh, well, you know, active uh, being actually 
you represent a, con a given constituency. You have a particular interest. That is what uh, I suppose um, active in politics really means. Because if you have a lawmaker who is actually in office, uh, for instance today, he has some interest. He has uh, to attend to the interests of his constituents, the yes. people who elected him. Mm -hmm. And that is what necessarily, I believe so in my own opinion, mm -hmm. uh, what being active in politics means. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, if you have a technocrat, a person who has just been appointed, um, from nowhere or somebody really but has the qualification and yes, suitability to serve in that particular portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, he has no particular interest whatsoever. His interest is to serve in cabinet and to ensure he serves the people equally because again he does not have any interest in as far as that portfolio is concerned and I believe that is what it means. Mm -hmm. uh, but that said and done, um, looking onto our situation today as uh, Kenya, uh, you've actually alluded to the fact that we have most politicians now who are serving in this cabinet. Mm -hmm. You know, we cannot run away from it because uh, getting into this um, cabinet position is not more of uh, qualification and suitability only. It's also about how well you're connected with the individuals or the appointing, appointing authority. Mm -hmm. As for Kenyan case today, I, I also heard you actually castigate uh, and say probably what was the necessity of creating these other extra positions. Mm -hmm. You know, it is the prerogative. Much as Kenyans hold different view about this, it is the prerogative of the president after having been elected and sworn into office to reorganize his government the way he feels it, mm -hmm. to uh, create and name portfolios the way he feels it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is the prerogative of the president and we can't change that. Sure. And that is why you see the constitution has only but given him the, the minimum um, uh, I mean requirement in as far as the people who are supposed to be appointed to cabinet. Perfect. 14 in, the, in our Kenyan case as a minimum and 22 as maximum. Yes. He can decide to have 14 mm -hmm. and not 22. Mm -hmm. Or he can decide to give us the, the entire 22. Mm -hmm. He can decide to have like for example we have the PS, uh, the PS today. Mm -hmm. Again we have the SES that we talked about. Yes. So all these kinds of things are is actually the prerogative of the president and the constitution really allows him to do this to reorganize as he deems it fit for him to really run the affairs of of this country um, very well, at least according to uh, the president or according to the, the party that is in power at that particular moment. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I may be sharing the same similar views uh, that uh, having some of this position was not necessarily um, a good thing. It was just uh, heaping more burden to the taxpayers, the taxpayer, yeah. uh, because again, what is it that the CAS, the CAS can do mm -hmm. uh, that the PS cannot, cannot do? do. Uh, still, we have the, the we have the ministers, yes. and we have advisors as well to these ministers. We have directors. We have directors in, in their respective positions. So it is a, it is some of it's a very honest conversation that we need to have as Kenyans. Mm -hmm. That do we really need this? Do we really need to have uh, maybe say for example a, a CAS? Uh, who is deputized by a PS and he still you have an administration, um, uh, is, is called what? SES. SES. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because that again, you'll understand, there are some ministries also that have more than one PS. Okay. I don't know if you know that. Yes, yes. Uh, for example, like when you education. come to the, um, uh, I mean the interior docket, we have uh, two PSs. You go to another one. So it's a very big burden on the taxpayer where as these uh, ministries or these individuals, we can only have a minister. Go to developed countries, um, for example. You'll find, for example, in US, you'll find actually one minister holding a very big portfolio. Yes. And uh, you don't even have all these assistants, you don't have all these directors. But for Kenyan case, we even a small population, a smaller population rather, mm -hmm. but we're having a very big representation. But it's m more of really accommodating uh, these people and ensuring at least they have a job. <laughs> that is why you see some of, most of the people who have been appointed to these offices were um, somehow politicians or they were aspiring to become um, politicians in, me, in one way or another. Let me challenge the school of thought, mm -hmm. Samuel. If we want to create positions uh, so that we can create jobs mm -hmm. for politicians who fell during the election, mm -hmm. what, are we te what message are we sending out to Kenyans? Because look at the Punguza Mzigo initiative. Yeah. The Punguza Mzigo initiative is actually trying to unload the burden, trying to remove the burden from the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. But then when we create things like cabinet and create other positions to try and create jobs for other people, look at the naming of the heads of parastatals mm -hmm. that happened the other day. I mean, it was, I don't want to use any mm -hmm. words, but <laughs> I lack words to mm -hmm. actually say that. But mm -hmm. when you look at the awarding of positions, the chairman and directors uh, sitting in those uh, uh, parastatals, it was purely politicians. Yeah. And what, what message are we sending? Are we telling Kenyans that it is okay to create jobs for your friends as opposed to creating positions 
for service delivery. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, as you talk about that, I would like also to uh, you to enjoy that with the matter that uh, Okuru Okoto was speaking about. You know, the court now having uh, you know the petitions or the injunction that are being put on this case, we are finding that Okoto is accusing this of uh, tampering with constitutional timelines. Yeah, because right now uh, the you know they are supposed to s take the bill round. And then the county assemblies are going are supposed to discuss this and then it's going to go to another level and another level. Maybe if you can just bring this to the understanding of <coughs> our viewer. What does this entail? And when it speaks about constitutional timelines for this particular one, what is he talking about? You know what, uh, Timothy? Uh, Ekuru Okot is um, actually is an astute lawyer. Mm -hmm. yeah, actually, Ekuru Okot was one of those um, uh, leaders in this country who participated uh, in the formation or the creation of the constitution that we have today. The uh, in, of uh, yeah, the committee of experts. Mm -hmm. Kuro Okota, I think, was the secretary. Yes. Um, actually, was a member of that particular committee. Mm -hmm. uh, so he understands this constitution too well. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, you know, we cannot operate like a banana republic. Mm -hmm. You know, if everyone who feels dissatisfied with the ruling or verdict given by the court can decide to do things the way they want, then we will not have a country. Uh, that's why you see sometimes people have been castigating the executive, castigating, uh, I mean, leaders, yes. uh, the president at some point, and saying, why is it that we are not following the law? You've even seen the betting companies, there's a story that you ran, yeah, betting yeah. companies going to court and saying KRA decided to shut down uh, the, the operation, freeze their, account, freeze freeze their account simply because, um, yet yeah, they, they did not actually the consider order. the fact that there was a court order. So mm -hmm. we do not want to have that precedent. We do not have... Uh, to, we don't want to make that as normal business, uh -huh. that anyone can defy a court order and they feel like it is a normal thing. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, if a Kuro court really feels dissatisfied, as he, ex he has expressly put it, the only avenue he has is to go and challenge the same in a competent court, to go back to the courts and try to seek more, clarif seek more clarification and oppose the same in a court of law. You cannot go out there. And I, I believe, even I remember last time, you remember what happened in this country, when we are having a repeat election. Yes. I mean, Honorable Raila Odinga decided to pull out of the election altogether. Mm -hmm. Although Raila also did it just technically, he did not actually write to IABC, but he announced yeah, he in a press conference that I've pulled out. But you see, there are laws that govern that if you are pulling out of an election, then you have to do what? Apply to, to the IABC, inform them uh, officially that you are pulling out of an election. Mm -hmm. But you see, IABC went again and included Raila Dinga's in name ballot. in the ballot <laughs> where you had him in that second sure, sure. Uh, election. Mm -hmm. So we do not want uh, this country actually to be run like we do not, uh, we are not governed by rule of law. Mm -hmm. So a Kuru court may be justified. Uh, his, um, uh, his whatever kind of things is putting forth that probably uh, this judge or the court did not actually um, adjudicate this matter well, mm -hmm. then he has to go back to the same courts and try to get more clarification, mm -hmm. or even ap appeal that ruling. You cannot go around or defy a court order. Sure. What is it that, what will we have of a, a country if every Kenyan, an ordinary person who has been accused or a, a verdict has been given and they defy simply because they feel it was not uh, deserving for them. Uh -huh. You see, it's going to be a very a big uh, challenge for this country. Sure, sure. Yesterday we had another ruling, uh, Martha, Karua Martha Karua versus Anne uh, Mumbi. Uh, Anne Mumbi, you know, she made oh. that clarification. She, she right. does not want to be called uh, Waiguru anymore. I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> so you might be sued. Be very careful no, about no, that. I, I apologize. <laughs> I withdraw that statement. Yeah. So, uh, I mean... Uh, uh, Martha Karua being a lawyer we know and understanding the law very clearly after the ruling came out and said she's not really happy with the ruling that has been given by the judges yes. in the Supreme Court but again uh, she has no alternative she has no choice but to abide by it yeah. you remember even in 2013 right Lodinga coming out saying we do not um, actually agree we, with this ruling, but we have to abide by it. There's yeah. nothing we can do. Sure. I mean, we have to be governed by rule of law. So essentially what I'm trying to say is that in as much as the Kuro Court may be having issues with that verdict, the only way he can challenge the same is not through uh, political yeah. forums, but to go back to the same courts and seek a further clarification yes. or appeal the same. Mm -hmm. So that is the only thing he can do. Mm -hmm. As for the question you have asked uh, regarding the appointment superstatals, that we have more politicians. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kenyans have always wanted that uh, there are so many youth 
young people who are educated, people who are qualified, people who can serve uh, competently in some of these offices uh, who should otherwise be appointed. Mm -hmm. But we're having a challenge of um, a leadership that seems uh, less sensitive uh, to matters regarding the youth. And that is why you see they give priorities to those they perceive their friends or people who whom they have served with at some point in their political career. Mm -hmm. That's why you see there's um, an almost a recycling habit that sure. we are having in this country in as far as appointment to these offices are concerned, sure. where you have individuals who served at least as politicians or ministers being recycled, uh, given different portfolios. In fact, you remember when President Kenyatta um, actually restructured the cabinet last time, yes. I mean, after he was uh, sworn in for a second term, mm -hmm. the individuals who are serving in those portfolios whom Kenyans really had issues with yes. and as far as uh, competence and integrity is concerned, mm -hmm. Uh, were not actually relieved their ministerial post and told to go home. They were given other, other. Uh, portfolios. Some were appointed as ambassadors. Ambassador so what does it tell you? Are these the only qualified individuals? It does tell you that politicians will only but try to go the route of those they perceive as their friends, people whom they have identified with at some point in their political career, which is a very unfortunate thing. And another question, Tawish. Mm -hmm. Looking at the way appointments are being done in these parastatals, mm -hmm. and it's funny because you mentioned the youth. I'll give you an example of a youth. But then my question is, are these parastatals, you know, just a bedrock for politicians? Is it where politicians go to rest or go to launch their political uh, ambition? Mm -hmm. Because look at someone like Jaguar who is now sitting in parliament. The first time we saw Jaguar actually assuming a government appointment, you know, or a government position was when he was appointed to Nakada, Nakada yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But then after that, Right now, he's in Bunge mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> as a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. So it is either they come from the parastatals to Bunge mm -hmm. or they come from Bunge to the parastatals. Is it, is, is, is it a culture that is being created in Kenya that as long as you are serving in government, then there's this political awarding by the government of the day to its clones and its allies? You know what, Timothy, once you get... Uh, elected or you get into some of these offices, mostly government um, offices, mm -hmm. it's like you get uh, a new baptism altogether. <laughs> it's like there's something, there's uh, a new thing that is being uh, actually inculcated in you. That's why you see people who have served as, for example, politicians, mm -hmm. uh, maybe as MPs or even governors, mm -hmm or those who have served in these uh, government offices mm -hmm. always feel like they have to be close to the system. They have to be close to government. Is, it, they have is to it globally or is it just a Kenyan culture? Not necessarily. It's not limited to Kenya only. I, I believe it's something that cuts across, uh, for example, the African continent. Mm -hmm. It's something that is so... Uh, I mean common now in the African continent where you'll find so many people who have been elected into this or appointed into these offices at least in one way or another are they, in they are involved in politics mm -hmm. um, but again we have to give credit where it's due because for President Kenyatta uh, for example today we have cabinet ministers who are serving today and those who are serving in some of the parastatals today who are not necessarily politicians yes. and who are actually but uh, executing their jobs without necessarily um, uh, connecting to politics that we have and today. Political interests. Uh, the problem we have today as a country is that we have individuals even who have been appointed to cabinet or are appointed to these uh, portfolios who are not supposed to be active in politics. They are supposed just to do their job as um, prescribed by the constitution, mm -hmm. but they are actively also involved in uh, the politics that we have today. Mm -hmm. A case in point is Mwangi Kiunjuri, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. uh, the Minister for Agriculture, I believe. Uh, he's been going around at some point also trying to, uh, I, I mean, speak <laughs> about the 2022 succession politics and all those mm -hmm. kinds of things. So how can Kenyans really have trust <coughs> in future? Because we are setting a very bad culture, like you're putting it, where we feel like once you've been appointed into this office, you only but have to execute your mandate as um, as required by the constitution and you have to actually um, alienate yourself from active politics but that is not what we are having today we having that is not what we are witnessing today most of these people will really want to play politics mm -hmm. I believe even though some of the people who are ministers today mm -hmm. or those who are serving as PSS or parastatal chiefs mm -hmm. In 2022, you will see them actually on ground. If they have lost this other position, they will be going back They'll to the ground to, the people to, to seek elective posts. Mm -hmm. uh, those who are um, in elective posts and uh, going to lose in this coming election, they will be, be appointed, appointed again into these parastatals and ministerial positions. So it's, a so it's, a, it's culture. become a, a culture. It's become like a culture, unfortunately. Quite a bad culture, I would bad say. Bad one. <laughs> yeah. Samuel Tawish. Yeah. 
let me drift away a little bit. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Politicians allied to the famous Tanga Tanga mm -hmm. uh, team don't seem to have a lot of problems with the Okot camp. Mm -hmm. Especially those who are not privy or are not, you know, friendly to the handshake. Mm -hmm. They have no problem whatsoever with the Okot, with the Okot camp. What is this telling us? Well, uh, you know what these politicians are doing is not necessarily identifying with Aukot's uh, bill. Mm -hmm. It is just trying to play uh, antagonistic politic, uh, politics because uh, uh, <coughs> apparently Raila Odinga, whom maybe they do not subscribe to his politics or to his ideology, yes. is against the Ekuru Aukot's initiative. And so it is just natural for people who oppose Raila Odinga, for example, to support the, the Ekuru Aukot's bill mm -hmm. because Raila Odinga has come out openly and actually opposed uh, the Punguza Mzigo initiative. Yes. So that tells you uh, that uh, sometimes we do not really oppose or support these initiatives mm -hmm. um, out of necessity or out of like we feel it is the right thing to do. It's because who is in that camp? Who is supporting this idea and who is not supporting or this idea? Or whether it fits you or not. Yeah, yeah. and that's mm -hmm. what the problem we have. Even today, even the, the current BBI that we are having today, mm -hmm. If at all there are any issues regarding this BBI or the, if you're going to go to a referendum, mm -hmm. the people who support Raila Odinga, uh, because now he's openly uh, said he's supporting the BBI mm -hmm. uh, recommendations, whatever kind of recommendations that are mm -hmm. going to come out of the BBI, are going to support that initiative blindly without really reading it and understanding it, and tomorrow they'll start actually crying again. The people who do not, um, who subscribe, for example, to President Kenyatta's uh, political uh, ideology mm -hmm. will support whatever kind of route he will take, just like he has done with the handshake today. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the people who are supporting Raila Odinga, they were not uh, supporting President Kenyatta. But now but they, they are fully behind the president. They have become the key lieutenants <laughs> of President Kenyatta. Why? Because their master, their general has had a handshake with the president mm -hmm. and they're actually reading from the same script. And so it is just natural for them to support. So those are the problems that we are having. These individuals are not supporting or opposing these mm -hmm. initiatives mm -hmm. simply because they are out of place, but because who is spearheading that? So okay. pros, <laughs> pros, pros and cons, mm -hmm. because I mean, it's a good thing if a party leader gives a directive and the party is able to be whipped behind him and to follow mm -hmm. his lead. I mean, that creates a stable political environment. Mm -hmm. But then we have a situation where some politicians, like right now, I'm sorry to say this, but again, the Tanga Tanga team, the president time and time again says, no politicking, let's talk about development, let's do up. But then you find there's another camp that is always mm -hmm. politicking and they're always talking about the 2022 succession politics. Is it right to say that even the BBI is all about Raila and Uhuru and not Kenyans, mm -hmm. as much as we would also want to say that you know, the court camp or the Tanga Tanga team is only about the leaders of the factions or the leaders of the parties. Like I said before, Timothy, all these initiatives is more of interest uh, for the politician. It's not about the ordinary monanchi. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just a matter of time before we see what the BBI really has uh, for Kenyans. You will see uh, when this report is out, uh, something that is going to gain momentum and um, I mean popularity is actually uh, the question of how we are going to expand, for example, executive, so that we can have these individuals or some of these individuals actually come into place. It's not, it really has l n uh, nothing or less really to do with the ordinary monarchy, unfortunately. A and it's a very dangerous trend we are setting as a country or even as a continent. If we are going to have our priorities actually directed only to the leadership, directed to the people who are getting into these offices, and not how we are going to help the ordinary people at least, so that they can even just get food on their table. Mm -hmm. It's not really uh, living the, luxu the luxurious life that you are seeing with maybe these leaders. Mm -hmm. It's just about getting that small thing, it's just about getting the basics, it's just making sure that uh, the cost of living is not that um, uh, painful on them, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that uh, we have jobs for our youth, uh, making sure that we empower our people. I mean, it is not really geared towards that. And it's just a matter of time, and you are going to see what the BBI recommendation is going to come up with. Mm -hmm. Most of the things really may be there, but as a bait for you to actually have a reason to wake up and go and vote for this, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, proposal. Uh, because, again, they have to give you at least a small bait, uh, just like what... Um, <laughs> 
uh, Kuro Court is doing when you know go and tell an ordinary person at home uh, that you know we're having this problem the billions. cost of living is so high because mm. we're having so many people representing us uh, at the executive or even at the uh, parliament yeah. the only way out is for us to reduce the number of these people so that we can but again they will always find avenues today even if you reduce that number to 10 i'm telling you 100 mm percent -hmm. these individuals the cost of living in any a circumstance I do not see like the cost of living is going to drastically come down anytime soon. Because Simply we because we have reduced, reduced the number, the slashed uh -huh. uh, the number of uh, representatives in the National Assembly or the Senate or the executive uh, per se. So it is a very big challenge we are having. But um, moving forward, mm. uh, moving forward where we are today, you remember 2010 when we voted for this constitution, uh, it was uh, touted as one of the most progressive constitutions we have in the world. Yes. And uh, we are so much excited when voting and having this new constitution mm -hmm. sworn, in, uh, uh, so, so sworn, uh, sworn mm -hmm. in. I remember I was with you at the Bombers of the Kenya. Promulgation. Those days, <laughs> <laughs> the promulgation of the constitution. Yes. I was with you. Uh, really, the passage, the promulgation was done at, um, at Guru Park. Park yeah, but the, the Yashpal guys and the like. The national tiling for the uh, referendum itself yes. was done, was at, done at, at the Bombers. Bombers of Kenya. Yes. I remember we were there actually <laughs> almost two days sure. <laughs> camping there to we try are, to we see. Are reporting from the, those are the good old days. <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> so, I, I mean, people were excited. Yes. People felt like now uh, this is the answer to everything that we are having. Yeah. A, and it came out clearly after some time, now with the implementation of this new constitution, mm -hmm. that even some of the people who really were advocates or proponents, those who actively supported this constitution, mm -hmm. did not understand it too well. You had people who are lawyers, people yeah. who are uh, seasoned politicians, sure, sure. who instead of going to vie for governor mm -hmm. positions at the county level, mm -hmm. decided to go to the Senate because they felt they are going to be the upper house, mm -hmm. they're going to be seniors, mm -hmm. more resources are going to be channeled channel to the Senate actually to try and monitor the counties, mm -hmm. but that was not the case. That is why you see they were at loggerheads with the county chiefs every other time, sure. and most of them who are serving as senators, mm -hmm. they have they have gone back and vied for this other position of governorship at the county level. Mm -hmm. It tells you that in the first place, they didn't quite understand. We're just passing this constitution out of euphoria. That does not mean that the constitution in generality uh, did not have anything good for Kenyans. Devolution is the best thing that ever happened to this country. Um, I mean, leadership has been taken to the grassroots. Mm -hmm. um, resources have been trickled to the grassroots. The only challenge we are having is that we have equally devolved corruption from the national government to the devolved governments. And that is why you see now, there's no accountability. Uh, you'll ask yourself the question, why will the people of Turukana, for example, die today of hunger or lack of water when you have a county government that really knows the priorities for a county government, sure. uh, county government of Turukana? And resources have already been given to that particular county. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, 10 billion every financial yes. year. What is it that is so difficult, for example, for Governor Nanok to sit down with the people, public participation, and ask them what is it that we can do? You it know, is surprisingly, the, it, is, it is the second term second we are term. serving under the from under the this new is the dispensation. Second, the new dispensation. So we are talking about uh, around almost eight, ten years. Almost, almost ten, ten years. years. Yeah, by 2022 will be 20. Uh, I mean, 2022 will be ten will years. Be ten years. Having had two elections after the after new, the promulgation new, of the, the constitution. new constitution. Now the question is, like you mentioned, eight years is not enough to start up an irrigation project that can actually bring, you know, food to such places to come up with maybe a business venture or an, a development project that can allow people of Turkana to have a good life. But as we conclude, Tavish, what's the way forward in terms of, is our problem a document or is our prog problem ethical? I think it's a combination of both factors. Mm -hmm. um, one, we have a problem with the document itself. Uh, there are some areas which, um, I mean, Ray, I mean, the learned friends will tell you there's a lacuna in law. Mm -hmm. There are some gaps that we really need to fill. To fill yeah. uh, but again, we also have that um, a lack of, um, I mean, obligation to really live by the constitution we have. Mm -hmm. Because when you have individuals who openly defy court orders, for example, who do not live by the constitution, yet this is, this is a document that is supposed to guide our day-to-day -day life. If you're having a country without really the constitution, without the law, or not being governed by law, then everyone will just do things the way they deem. There's lack of ethics. There's lack of ethics. Then mm -hmm. th that becomes a very big challenge for our country. Mm -hmm. So we want, first of all, in as much as we are advocating for, or we support that we need some changes in our constitution, we also think that it is time Kenyans really 
live up to that morality of abiding and living by our constitution. Mm -hmm. Because it can never be right that we advocate for a change of the constitution, that we say we want um, a new document, or we really need this constitution, but we do not want to live by it. It's going to be very dangerous for this country mm -hmm. when any other person or every person feels like they can do things the way they feel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not about how the law really requires us to do so. Much as we are going to do this, and I'm sure that even this new constitution, these uh, changes of the constitution mm -hmm. is going to go through, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the support of Raila Odinga, that's mm -hmm. the reality. I can't sit here and cheat you uh, that probably this constitution is not going to pass through mm -hmm. unless a miracle happens, like what happened in 2005 yes. when you had the opposition actually defeat a sitting president, Mwai Kibaki, sure, then, sure. when we had the orange and banana, mm -hmm. you remember, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, orange actually defeating banana. Which Ironically, the two leaders were still on the same side. Yeah, Raila yeah. and Uhuru were on the Raila same were camp. On the same camp. And right now, Raila is <laughs> in the opposition, and Uhuru is running the state machinery, and they have the support but of But they read from other, the so same script. Well, remember, <laughs> during the funeral, what he said in uh, Bomet? Uh -huh. Yeah, he said... Uh, Honorable Deputy Presidents and uh, President Kenyatta uh -huh. uh, were actually the founders of ODM party. Uh -huh. What does it tell you? <laughs> it means uh, we will always, actually, this is like a conveyor belt. We'll always go back where we came from. But At some point, these people served in Kanu. They served in ODM. <laughs> <laughs> I think in the words of um, Ze uh -huh. Moi, uh -huh. that Kanu uh, itaongoza Kenya miaka miyamoja. So we are yet to see that. But Samuel Tawish, thank you very much for coming. and honoring our invitation and thank you very much for shedding, helping us shed light on this topic. Viewer, we have come to the end of this segment. Thank you very much for staying tuned. You can keep the conversation going on hashtag GBS Morning Extra. You can also watch this very episode on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, and you can also send us a short SMS on 21144. Our guest today in studio was Samuel Tawish, a political commentator and analyst, and I'm really glad that he was here with us today and we want to call you here more often. <laughs> My pleasure. Yeah, you, over. Your, your presence here reminds <laughs> me of those good old days like you're mentioning the bombers uh -huh. when you could spend like uh, more than three days at mm -hmm. Bombers of Kenya waiting for the results and all that stuff and uh, yeah uh, that actually brings us to the end of this segment. My director is telling me that our time is up. Thank you very much viewer for staying tuned. We now pave way for the sports uh, extra with Kevin Nyariki that comes to you shortly after this break. My name is Timothy Omondi. Do have yourself a lovely day. Bye-bye for now.